You good? Quanto questo? We back at it again. What's going on, everybody? This is Drees, and this is Drees Speaks 28. Plinke, have you been there? As usual, let's give a shout out to the latest viewers and subscribers. See those names as they scroll up the screen. Please keep in mind that my brother Richard Rich is still on lockdown. So please put money on this book set, RBS Auto Works, on the Cash App system. And when you have time, please feel free to subscribe to Willie Wakanda. The link will be in the description box. Go there as soon as this video is over. Moving on, let's go into the second edition of Jesus Caribbean Triangle, the country of Brazil, the city of Rio de Janeiro, the neighborhood of Copacabana by day and night. This is given to us by a WTU correspondent who just left the country not too long ago. If you are a viewer or subscriber who would like to have your travel showcase, feel free to hit up my email in the about section on my page. Enjoy. See, si, Carmel, yes. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. See, si. all that, put it all on there. Hook my shit up. After the came here is beautiful. Wow, just amazing, man. The views. Sheesh. Little Christ and Redina over there. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. There you have it, the second edition of Dreezer's Caribbean Triangle. Hope you enjoyed it. And now we're on to the main subject of today's post, which is Palenque. 
The story of Palenque is an interesting one of how they broke away from the daily grind of slavery under Spanish rule into the wild jungle of Mahatis, Bolivar, Colombia to form Palenques. Palenque means walled city. The Africans were set out to free other Africans as they came into the Magdalena River Valley, which is close to Cartagena. These rescue missions were led by a brother named Bincos Biojo, or Domingo Biojo. Domingo in Spanish meaning Sunday. In this case, Sunday being the only day slaves were free. Domingo was born in the Portuguese colony of Guinea-Bissau of West Africa. He was seized by Portuguese slave traders, sold to Spaniards, and transported to Colombia around 1596. And that's where he went to work. He escaped with 10 other people. This culminated in the creation of San Basilio de Palenque, the village of Maroons. His efforts to come back and free his people were quite successful. That in 1713, by the decree of the King of Spain, San Basilio became the first free place for people of African descent in the Western Hemisphere. 88 years before Toussaint Dessalines. Word. Now, my last post on Dreese TV was on or about Afro-Columbia. And I just wanted to dive just a little bit deeper into the Afro-Columbian history on this one. That said, has anyone been to Palenque? I look forward to going to this place at some point in the future. I was researching a new place in Colombia to visit when I ran across this jewel of history. But after listening to some of these documentaries that I looked at on YouTube, I almost was about to get a refund for my trip to Rio in May in order to go and tour this place and document it myself. I don't speak Spanish that well, but I can read it decently. But then in this same documentary that I watched, I listened to a brother say these words. And it made me think something. So I'm sitting here thinking, if it's time to take off the chains and it's time to fight, then that would pretty much mean they had the choice to either be slaves or be free, which is why I don't understand this dude. I properly apologize for how that slave comment made people feel. So I want to take this moment right now to say that I'm sorry. Sorry for what? people making a decision that they didn't want to be slaves anymore? Then what am I supposed to say about the Indians when the colonists came? Or the people of Tasmania in 1828? Or the Haitians during the Haitian Revolution in Haiti? The people of Iwo Jima, Mopai Point, Saipan, as well as these people of Palenque? That they didn't make a choice? When you clearly see that they made a choice to not be slaves or prisoners of war? You tell me. Dreams. I'm down with Dreams TV.